I was just looking in my planner and our next math unit is fractions. Now fractions is a massive undertaking for any grade level. So I wanted to share with you how I plan for my first week of fractions with my third graders. Bring your planner, your notes, I'll bring the resources. Let's plan together. All right, I am all set up to plan my first week of my fractions unit in third grade this year. I plan with a happy planner and y'all, I have to tell you, there's no better feeling than starting a brand new unit on a Monday. It is perfect. So first things first, let's start thinking about that first day of fractions. Now, all the resources I'm going to be sharing with you guys are from the Not So Wimpy Teacher yeah, curriculum. Perfect. We have a third grade and a fourth grade math curriculum that truly have everything you need. And I'm excited to kind of show some of the pieces because when I got this resource, I was floored by just how much you're getting within each unit. So I'm actually gonna be starting this the Friday before. My instruction starts on Monday. So the Friday before, I'm gonna be giving the pre-assessment. I love to pre-assess, especially when it's a skill that it is just so brand new to students. Students coming into third grade, fractions are brand new for them. So I love to use a pre-assessment because it's gonna show me who already has some background knowledge, who is already going to need support from me, who can I start extending with. So I'm gonna give the pre-assessment on the Friday before. I already put on here, I need 22 copies of it. And I'm gonna put a little reminder on Monday. I like to give it on a Friday or bef truly before the first day of instruction. So I have time to look at the data and I'm actually gonna use this to make some of my initial math groups for this unit. So first things first, admin the pre-assessment the Friday before. All right, now let's start thinking about my instruction on Monday. So Monday's lesson itself focuses on identifying parts of a fraction. Now you're gonna see here, I'm gonna pop up just a little walkthrough of the daily lesson plan. All of the lessons for the entire math curriculum start with the I can statement. I think it's super student friendly and an awesome way to introduce your lesson for the day. And then we go into a really quick fact fluency practice. I love this built-in practice. It's a part of every single lesson. So built-in fact fluency, and then a warm-up question for students that are going to be connected to the skill. After the warm-up question, we go right into the lesson. We have turn and talks built in, vocabulary words, practice of the skill, and it really sets them up for that initial introduction to fractions. Now, it looks really quick, but these are designed to be mini lessons. We want to introduce the skill, practice the skill, and then release them to do this in small groups and on their own. We do have some options for center rotations, as well as an exit ticket included in every lesson. Now that you've seen what my slides are gonna look like for that Monday, I'm gonna go ahead and just write it in my math block, identifying parts of a fraction. I love that the slides come done for you with all the things you need to really build a strong and quick math mini lesson for your students. Now you did see that exit ticket at the very end as well. I'm gonna make copies of this for my students and I'm going to use this on Monday in addition to that pre-assessment data. I only need 11 of these because there's two to a page. I love these exit tickets. They're quick, they're very straightforward and it's gonna immediately show me who understands and who already has some misconceptions on the skill. Now I did wanna show the lesson plans. These are some of the just clearest, most concise plans I've ever had the pleasure of working with. You guys know when you get that teacher manual and it's pages and pages and pages of math plans that you're having to read through just to get to the meat of the lesson. You get one page for the mini lesson and then one page for your small groups, which is fantastic, makes it really easy. I actually keep these in a binder as I work through the unit and then I can write notes on the students I met with. I'll write their names in the boxes for who I'm meeting with and then write some notes on how they did. So you do get these lesson plans and I love these. Gives you what you need, gives you the vocabulary you can hit, extension ideas. So for my Monday, this is going to really help me be ready to teach that lesson. Now, let's take a look at what I'm gonna do with my math groups on that day. So this plan has you giving the pre-assessment the day of this first lesson. I like to give the pre-assessment early. So what I'm actually going to do is do a little fraction manipulative 
experience. I love to get students with manipulatives in their hands, but I like to do it in the controlled setting of a small group. When you give all of your students manipulatives all at once in your lesson, your lesson has just quadrupled in time. So I'm gonna pull groups to my table and give them time. Now that you've seen what my slides are gonna look like for that Monday, I'm gonna go ahead and just write it in my math block, identifying the parts of a... Alrighty, let's start thinking about my Tuesday. Now, Monday is big on the introduction of the concept and Tuesday is just going to build on that. So this lesson would be 7.2. I'm gonna use that same PowerPoint model that you saw for Monday, except Tuesday's lesson is going to focus on that unit fraction. That is a huge part of the third grade standards for fractions. So I love that this unit already covers that for you. Now I need to put in the reminders based on my extension. I want to have some colored paper available for students so that they can complete my extension task. The extension task for this is so fun they get to create their own anchor chart to explain and model unit fractions. So I love that. Super creative, super easy, zero prep from me, but makes it really easy to extend for those students. So that's going to be my whole group lesson on this day. And then my small group lessons, again, they're really, really just laid out for you. Tells you supplies you need. I love to use whiteboards, so I love that this includes that as well. Things I can do with students who are approaching on track and who have mastered the skill. Now, I do wanna show off these problem sets because this is one of my favorite things that you're getting in a unit because they are so, so quick and easy to use. Nothing's worse than like getting into a lesson, realizing they're going to need some independent practice and then having to go scramble to find something and just praying that your printer has enough paper left in it that you can print enough copies for all your students right there on the fly. I love these problem sets because it has all of the elements that perfectly match each lesson. So students are getting immediate practice right after that. So something I like to do, if I'm not doing an exit ticket, even though each lesson does come with the exit ticket, I will give a problem set as an exit ticket. It's a few more questions, might take them a little longer to complete. So I'll say, okay, this is your independent task, jump right into it. And then after maybe five minutes, I'll say, if you need extra support for your independent task, my table is open. And then I'll have students who recognize that they cannot independently do the task yet. They'll come and they'll sit with me and we'll finish it together. This can be a really quick process. It doesn't have to take a long time. This is something I love to do with these problem sets. Now, they also come with homework. There's a problem set, a homework, and an exit ticket for every single day of instruction. And what I'll do, I'll print problem sets for everyone, and I'll print a few extra homeworks. And if you came to my table for help on the problem set, I'm gonna staple the homework to it. I'm gonna send you home and say, teach your adult how to do this. That's a great way to get the math work and practice happening at home as well. So my Tuesday is looking ready to go. Wednesday's focus is going to be modeling fractions. I love that we do these two pieces first and then go into modeling fractions because modeling fractions sometimes is the most complicated part just because that segmenting of the shape can be really challenging for them. And we have to introduce a lot of different types of models. So this is the perfect way to start introducing the bar model, which is like the more traditional fraction model that we think of when we think of fractions. So this lesson is going to be working on modeling fractions in that bar model way. Now I have my lesson plan ready to go. I have my teacher plan ready to go for my Meet the Teach small group. And I wanna show you, this is what students are gonna be doing on this day in small group. I love to do my interactive journal activities in small group. Again, keeps that control right there with me. I can support students if we suddenly forget how to use our scissors. It's amazing how often that happens in third grade. And it is just a great kind of refresher and reminder of what we've done in the lesson. They're identifying fractions and then they're gonna have to model them as well. And I love that this guy is five fifths. It goes back to what we're gonna hit later in the unit. It's kind of like an early introduction of that fraction of a whole. Love this. This is what students are gonna be doing with me in small groups that day. So I need to say interactive. 
notebook. And I need a reminder for them to bring their supplies. I'm gonna put that in my small group slides for that day when I tell them where they're going in each separate rotation. I'm gonna say meet with teach, bring your supplies for a journal. All right, let's look at Thursday. Now we're really moving through our sequence here. Thursday's lesson focuses on number lines. And I love that the day before we did the bar model and then our next day, so Thursday's lesson, it's 7.4 in the unit. We're going to use the bar model to build the number line. I think this method is absolutely foolproof when it comes to building a number line because students already have all of the segments laid out for them. It makes them making even segments on a number line that much easier. That is something that I try and do as often for them as possible. Just make sure that we're setting them up for success. I know my students will struggle at just giving a blank line, but when we use that instructional tool of using the bar model and then the blank line, it makes it that much easier for them. So number line, and then in my small group, there is an additional journal page that I can do with my students. I might also do some whiteboard work with them. I like to do, so for example, we'll take the fraction bars, they'll draw the line, and then they'll do their segmenting, and then they'll practice labeling. I have class sets of these guys, they're like Unifix cubes, which is awesome. So I might do some work with that on this Wednesday as well. Whiteboard work, again, keeping the manipulatives happening at my table with me to make sure we're using everything correctly and accurately. All right, let's think about our last day of the week, Friday. Friday's lesson is an additional lesson on number lines, which I think is awesome. An issue I have found in other curriculums is that it just rushes through things. Y'all, this is a huge concept. If it needs two or three days, give it two or three days. It's gonna be worth it in the long run. No one has ever truly celebrated getting through everything the fastest. I would rather take my time and make sure my students have really mastered the skill that we're working on. So in this lesson on Friday, they're going to continue to work with number lines. We're gonna try that extension of making the number line without having the bar model above it. There's great ideas for intervention and extension. And for our wrap up on Friday, I'm again gonna push this problem set now. One final thing before we close this bad boy up for the day. I wanna just point out how quick and easy that was. If I hadn't been chatting with you guys, this would have been done in probably 10 minutes. It's so easy to just pull out those lesson plans. You know the lessons are gonna have everything you need in it. Decide what you're doing in math groups, if you're gonna use a problem set, if you're using an exit ticket, if you're gonna do the interactive journal activity. It's really easy when you have all these resources right here with you to make these plans and then get them in action for your students. Thank you guys so much for planning with me. I'm feeling really excited for this first week of fractions. My students love it every year when we start talking about fractions, especially in third grade. It's like their favorite foreign concept to get started with. If you're looking for any of the resources I shared today, everything came from our third grade math curriculum. Curriculum. Every unit you need to teach fraction in our favorite math workshop model is included in that curriculum. The exit tickets, the practice sets, the notebook activities, the lessons themselves, all included in the curriculum. We have this curriculum available for third and fourth grade. We have individual units, but my personal favorite is the year-round bundle. I'm going to have them both linked up in the cards and down in the description box. Now it's time for me to go tuck everything away with my sticky notes so I can start making my copies tomorrow. So I'm ready for my fractions get started. I wanna hear from you guys. Let me know down in the comments. Is there another math unit or another unit in general you'd like to see how I get started in my classroom? I love filming these plan with me's because it helps me get my work done and it helps you get your work done too. Let me know if there's a topic you would love to see and I would be happy to set it up for you. As always, thanks so much for watching and hope you have a not so whippy day. Bye.